Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Mass Capacity Show. I am one of your hosts, Harv. Uh, this and with me is Dean. What's up? Sounds good. The cat does like the Vulcan thing. Yeah, man. Vulcan Spock. Spock. I can't. I can't do it with my hands. Dude, you should come up for the Northern FanCon thing. When is that? I think it's the. It's. Th- it was thirty days away the other day. So like in a month. You should come up. It was fun, man. You should go with me. I had no. I have no one to go with. Ben didn't want to go last year. I ended up. Meeting was that like the fifteenth of May? Uh, yeah, it's like the middle of May. It's a, it's a long. I think it's a long weekend. It's the weekend the fair comes up here. I don't know because I'm going to San Francisco at the end of May. Oh yeah, this is the middle of May. I think. Oh darn! You should come here too. It's fun, man. It was really cool, actually. <laughs> I just wants me to fucking go. I just bought a fucking townhouse, bro. You just what? I bought a townhouse. You bought a townhouse? Yeah. I didn't know that. You never tell me anything, man. <laughs> I bought it a couple weeks ago. I cut. <laughs> you, you bought a townhouse a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And you've only talked to me X amount of times since a couple weeks. <laughs> but this is the first I'm hearing of it now. I didn't think it was that big a deal, but I don't think it is. Well, it's not like it's not like oh my god. It is oh my god. It's like your first place. What are you talking about? It is oh my god. That's exciting, man. It's my first house. Oh, where'd you buy it? Uh, sorry. Nice. I bought it. Uh, it was up for three hundred and forty-nine. That's pretty good. Yeah, and three bedroom, seventeen hundred square feet. That's sweet. Is Derek moving in with you? No, I'm not moving into it. I'm renting it out. You bought it, and you're not even living in it. No, I'm gonna rent it. The rent's gonna be like twenty four hundred bucks for it a month. That's cool. Yeah, you're a businessman already. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking what adulthood, that. bro. Adulthood. Oh, I thought you were living in it. That, oh, that no, fuck. Oh. I, I can't go from Surrey to fucking work, man. That's gonna be like. An hour and a half of commute. Oh, dude, that's cool though. I didn't know you did that. Were you just were you like looking for it, or it just popped up? No, my sister, my sister just like buy this place. I was like, okay. <laughs> Your sister's like, Harvey should buy this place, and you're like, okay, yeah. that's it. Hey, you know what my uh my room number is? Sixty nine. Yeah. Is it actually. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That it was meant to be, man. <laughs> that's cool. Oh, that's sweet, man. That's kind of neat. Yeah, man. Rent it, make some money. Now yeah, can... that's that's the plan because like I can get that money and then the mortgage for it is like fourteen hundred bucks a month. Pocket a couple thousand po- thousand bucks a month. Or whatever. Yeah, and then my rent here is eight hundred bucks, so it's perfect. Hmm, that's sweet, man. That's cool. Yeah. So now you can afford to take me to the kind of funny thing. <laughs> I've already taken one of my friends to it. Oh, who are you taking? Uh, I'm taking. She was on the show, Isha. I'm taking oh, her. Does she listen to all them too? No, she doesn't. Oh. She just wanted to go to San Francisco. I was like, well, I'm going if you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Is she going to go with you to all of it? Yeah, I bought oh, her a ticket. Cool. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Oh, I don't want to be a third. <laughs> maybe next Maybe next time you'll take me. I'll pay you in hugs. Hey, I'm just, I'm just buying the ticket. I'll I'm not buying the flight up there. I'll pay you in hugs. All right, fine. <laughs> I just like, get, get away from me. <laughs> That's the, but hugs and, and steps are the currency in my house. We steps? Don't, we don't, yeah, oh, yeah, no steps. steps. Yeah. Fucking hell, <laughs> <laughs> they're the most oh. stupid things man but so they love stupid. them i don't know i couldn't do it i would give up after like four days i'm like nah it's like trying to eat healthy you eat good for a day you're like man this tastes really crappy <laughs> yeah yeah i'm trying to do that before i go to san francisco mm-hmm. I'm trying to get back into shape and stuff just don't for- eat just dehydrate yourself for a week and then eat you'll look good right right uh, for anybody that does not know what the Maximum Capacity <laughs> Show is, it's <laughs> like ten minutes later. <laughs> it's a top of a show where we bring topics to the table, we discuss them, we debate them. Sometimes we actually come to a verdict about them. <laughs> uh, sometimes we actually have topics. Sometimes we do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're tr- we're trying to get better at that, and uh, we post it Monday through Friday, topic by topic, day by day, all the way yeah to Friday, and then Friday we post the entire thing. On YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, SoundCloud, all those fun places. Yeah, all those fun places. And brand new this week, Maximum Capacity Show brought to you by Monster. Sugar-free Monster, great for your health. <laughs> but really not. <laughs> no, they <laughs> wouldn't sponsor us. <laughs> I am drinking it, though, FYI. And I, I, I work out occasionally. Just saying, sponsorship. Just say- <laughs> I'll wear, I'll wear <laughs> Next Monster. Next week, you get an email for Stamps.com. <laughs> <laughs> Stamps.com, endorsed by Monster. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so I'll start off. Keeping in touch is my topic. Keeping. In I feel touch. like I, like I'm trying. I'm trying like. So, how we're getting with all this technology and all this kind of crazy shit and all this stuff? Is it harder to keep in touch 
with people? Because I feel like we we have like the Facebooks, the YouTubes, the Twitters, all that kind of thing. Insta. But keeping in touch with these, like all these people, keeping in touch with people is just harder. It seems. I feel it's almost easier to keep in touch with people, but you have more of an option not to. You know what I mean? I get maybe it's the fact that like you you see all these people on Facebook and stuff. You're like, all right, I already know what they're what's happening with them. Well, I don't need to call them. Dude, I literally have like twenty friends on Facebook now. I got rid of everyone. But even yeah. even if like even if you have like a hundred people, like it, like like you just see these people with their lives and all that kind of thing, and then yeah. you're just like. Do I need to call them? Do I need to talk to them? Because I already know what's happening with their life. That's why I narrowed it down to so few. Like, that I don't care. Like, it's not that I don't... Like, it is that I don't care. Like, you're not my friend. We were acquaintances at best for most of them, right? And it's like, I have enough stuff that if I'm going to go on, like, social media, I don't care about your puppy. You know, I want to see something from someone that I like. That's why I, I like Twitter the best. Yeah. Think you well, like, Twitter's, Twitter's not really like a... A catching up or keeping in touch with anybody really because that's just you're following yeah, people that true. you would never talk to really that's true i don't know man i guess maybe it is easier to keep in touch with people but like for me i just don't want to i feel like like this also came it came uh back to me because uh next year or not next year uh in august is my 10 year reunion from uh db todd are you gonna go to that it's just really fucked up i don't know i'm thinking about it I think it'd be interesting. I think it'd be interesting. But like, I was just going through everybody that's on there that I knew from high school and stuff. And it's like people have kids. They are they married or they're just where they are again. Still, <laughs> it's just like keeping in touch with all these people would be really hard. It would take up all your time. Yeah. And the thing it's is, just... like, you might put the effort out, and they don't give a shit either. Like, they might not even respond yeah. back to you, right? Yeah, and plus, just keeping in touch with my parents is tough too. Sometimes, like I, I only talk to them once a week. Dude, I don't even have like a huge group of like good friends. I have like, you know, like you, Colton, Ben, Luke, uh, Dylan. I don't really see Dylan that much. Who else am I missing? Well, if I'm missing someone, I feel bad. Like literally, <laughs> those are the only people I really like on a weekly basis. Like, uh, keep in touch with or. Um, care to keep in touch with you know what i mean with my parents and stuff like that it's like once a week if if it's once a week but like my friends that are prince george i guess we have a group chat for us it's not that big a deal but like like people that i've met in the last couple of years and stuff like that it's just and plus living in a big city it's tough to keep in touch with people yeah like do you even do you keep in touch with anyone you went to university with no actually i have one one of my buddies maybe him but like i when I go back to Prince George. Yeah. So, like, it's kind of weird in a way when you think about it. Like, it, it should be easier now than ever to stay in contact with people. But I think it, it almost has made us keep in contact with people less. Yeah. Like, you have so many outlets to, like, keep in touch with people. But, like, it makes them maybe further away, too. Uh, yeah. But I, 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 I don't know. I think, like, when I think about it, it's like... Yes, it's easier, but it's also easier for me to stay in touch with the people I care about. So, like, they get, like, for you, like, you know, your friends from Prince George you grew up with get, like, 95% of your attention when you come back to town, right? So think about that. Yeah. And when you're also gone, they probably get 95% of your social media because now you're away from them, but you have this outlet to reach them. So think about it. Now you only have, say, 5% of time for other people when you come up. And another five percent of time for people on social media. That you like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's when I was when I came down there last time, uh, or up there last time. Sure, the only only people I saw were you and uh, my friends, like Dev and Jason, yeah, and that yeah. kind of thing. That, those are the only people I saw. Yeah, because that's the only time I really have. Right, I rather meet the meet or uh, see the people that I need to see first, and then everybody else is pretty much secondary after that exactly yeah exactly that's like i said like your five percent bubble that if you don't even touch you're fine with or whatever right yeah but it makes yeah. it makes sense like that's kind of how i look at it like i think it if you want it to it's easier to keep in touch with with people other than you know your main group of people but i think if you don't want it 
you don't want to, then it's the same as if you didn't have the social media, right? Like, honestly, man, I don't, I can't recall a conversation I've had on, like, Facebook with people from high school other than, like, people that I still see now once in a while. Like, like once high school ended, you know, the people that you were, like, friendly with at school because it made school easier? Like, I don't think I've ever had a conversation with those people other than maybe seeing them at the mall or at the gym saying hi, literally hi, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a couple of people from high school that like I still talk to, but like it's not like actual conversations with them. It's more of just and, like it's, a... and it's sometimes it's weird just talking to them, just like having a conversation. And you just kind of feel awkward a little bit because it's forced almost, right? You almost yeah, feel, yeah. It feels forced. You almost feel obligated, like oh, they're online. I should say hi because I haven't said hi to them in like five months. It's not even that. Like even if you don't see them online, if you see them in real life too, mm-hmm. you kind of feel like. Hey, how's it going? Good. So, how's everything going? Good. Good. I know. Dude, uh, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> for a while, I, I kept running into people, and a couple of them were like, oh, man, you should come over for a beer or whatever. And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. And I walk away, and I'm like, with <laughs> Carrie. And I'm like, you know, you're never going to come No, for no. A beer. <laughs> the thing was, like, I thought they actually wanted to, but Carrie's like, dude, they're just being nice. I'm like, no, they <laughs> actually want. And then she's like, just wait. You'll never hear from them. <laughs> and then you never hear from you them. Say, Yo, you want to go for that beer? Like if they message me, like I probably would, but yeah. they're probably thinking the same thing as me. Like I'm not gonna go to my way. It's kind of like the nice thing you say because you see yeah. them. Yeah, exactly. But it's so funny how we all do it. We all know, and everyone does it anyway. It's just like you. Do you ever go places where you see people, and you weren't like super friends with them, but you you know them, but you don't even like say hi. Like you guys just kind of see each other and lock eyes, and that's it. That happens to me at the gym since I started going to the gym, man. I see all these people, and it's like, they know who I am. I know who they are. I don't want to have a conversation with. I'll say hi, or we'll just look at each other for a second and acknowledge <laughs> that we're there, and that's it. And that's what it's become that's a couple... version of hi. It is, because it's like, they don't really give a shit what's going on in my life. I don't really give a shit what's going on in their life. And we're just keeping it, like, easy. We don't have to do this. Like you said, hey, how's things? It's just like, hey, I see you there. What's up? And that's it. And just yeah. all by eyes. That's my favorite. <laughs> I like that. That's funny. Or, or they're just trying to figure out who the fuck you are, like why you're staring at them. That's true. You know who's <laughs> the best at like uh, meeting people and stuff? Colton. I've gone places with him where he's like, oh, I think I know that guy. And he walks up. He's like, hey, I'm Colton. I think I know you from somewhere. What's your name? And the guy's like, oh, I'm Joe. Or he's like, actually, I don't know you. And Colton's like, oh, cool, man. I can't do that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not like that kind of thing either. Like, like I don't. I don't. I am too shy of a person to do that thing, or self conscious of a person to do that thing. I just kind of think, like, if I can't remember their name, they're clearly not important enough in my life, so I'm not going to go waste my time figuring it out. Like, I kind of feel <laughs> like I'm... Man, I'm kind of starting to think I'm a negative person. Like, Carrie <laughs> keeps saying I'm negative. I don't think I'm negative, though. I think I'm just kind of, like, a realist. It's like, why am I going to go spend my time talking to that person when it's not going to matter ever again, you know? Like, did your parents ever tell you growing up? Like, my dad always said this for some reason. Like, he worked in, like, the paper, like, like newspaper and stuff, so that was a lot about contacts. But he always yeah. said, like, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And it's like, I agree with that to a degree. In 20 years, if I go to the car lot and this guy went to school, if I recognize him, he's not going to give me a deal because I went to school with him 20 years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I think it's like, do you, do you want a deal out of it or you just want to talk to him? No, like I, I, like, I think maybe, like, my dad and some people, I think, like, maybe our parents' age, like, it's a little bit different. But I think they actually think, like, oh, hey, that's, that's John Smith and... We went to school together. Maybe he'll give me a deal. And they actually go and say, "Oh, hey, John, how's it going? How's life been? Oh, can you give me? A, you gonna give me a deal? Like, I would never say that to someone. You know oh, I mean? yeah. But yeah. I think like see uh, that, that that's also the thing. Like I, I think my parent, like you, my parents tell me, or my my sister tells me, is like, I'm not I'm not that kind of a person where I would go up to a person for like a deal. No, I would I just be like, that. hey, how's it going? That's it. Mm-hmm. Unless it was a close friend. Like, if I went up to you at Best Buy, I'm like, hard man, hook me up, give me a deal. And yeah. If, and if you were that's like, different. I can't, then I'd be like, okay, cool, I'd drop it. Yeah, that's different, though, right? That's completely different. Yeah. If like, you don't, if you if you haven't talked to me for, like, ten years. Exactly. I would never do that. Different. If I no. came up and you were in line, I'd be like, oh, hey, man, how's things? And leave. And, like, yeah. leave, right? Yeah, and that's exactly. only because I have to, then. You're right there. <laughs> I can't ignore the fact that I see, I've seen you, like... <laughs> I don't know. We have, eyes. That's it. <laughs> dude, have you ever done the thing where, like, you go up to the till and you pretend you're on the phone? No, I've never done that. I've done that, like, at least a handful of times. Not even to people I know. It's just, like, a talky cashier, and you're, like, seven people behind, and you're just like, man, this chick ain't gonna shut up. So you, like, pretend. You're, like, two people away, <laughs> and you pick up your phone, and you're like, hello? 
And you get up there and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just on the phone. And you give the stuff and you pay. And then you walk out the door and you put your phone back in your pocket. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've done that a solid five times, if not more. <laughs> you really don't want to talk to people. Dude, I just, no, I'm just, <laughs> don't you ever get in the mood where you're just like, man, I, I'm like anti-social mood right now. And that's always the time I run into people. It's like, man, it's like you literally f- f- saw me f- for the first time on the moment I don't want to like be around humans. I don't know. I, I'm usually never antisocial. I guess not antisocial in that kind of way. Um, I talk to people. That's, but I'm not like I don't have like a big social life anyways. Like a huge social life. Yeah. Like I know people, but that's about it. <laughs> I know people though. <laughs> people will wreck you. <laughs> yeah. I know people, motherfucker. <laughs> so what's the verdict that uh, we we think it is? I think it. I, is. Th- I think it's harder. I think it's tougher. For per- like me personally, I think it's tougher. I think it's easier, but it has made it also easier for me to just ignore people. Ignore you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, ignore people. So it's like I think what is that? What is it called? The catch twenty two, where yeah, it's easier right. but it's harder kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think if you're like a real social bug, like you're, you know, then it's perfect for people like that. But I don't, I don't know, man. I I don't like socializing very much. So like for me, it's. Different. If, if I had twenty people texting me every day, it'd be overload, man. I know. I I don't I, I don't think I would be able to. I would just turn my phone off or like put it to the side and be like, all right, like I'm today, gonna ignore everybody to, for the next today, hour. I text one, two, three, four, five. I text five people today. I text Ben. I text my brother. I text my mom and my dad, and I text you and Colton. That was it. And yeah. I only text my mom because she texts me first, and I text you about the show. And I and Colton texts me about uh, drinking, <laughs> and then my brother asked if he could come up. So basically, I initiated like one conversation with you today, <laughs> and it's like and my phone starts going off for a few minutes, and it's like, oh my god, I'm being harassed. You ever get that feeling? Yeah, I don't know. I get that just for notifications wise. Oh, dude! Like Facebook notifications and T- does your Twitter go like all insane? I get when so you, many followers. When you tweet stuff. <laughs> I get so many followers that follow me and leave the next day. So I, I get the message that I got a follower, and I get an email, and then the next day they're not there. It's like, it, it. I wake up with like twenty emails a day from like Twitter and stupid shit. Yeah. Not one of them is important. It's. No, yeah, none of them are important. No. I should just turn off fucking that shit. Notifications. Not no, uh, just the email thing where it sends you an email. I should just turn that shit off. You know who followed me on Twitter yesterday? George Larock. Really? Yeah, the real official account that's verified. And He's Zach like, I'm following you. And Zach Boychuk from the Carolina Hurricanes also. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? <laughs> uh, He's going to unfollow you probably tomorrow. No, he's this has been 2 days, but He's fo- Zach Boychuk's following 61,000 people and George Rock's following 44, so I probably just fell into the list that they I don't know why they do that. I don't get it. Maybe I could barely even follow. A, I could barely follow 180 people, let alone fucking 44,000. I know. Sometimes I add these people that add me, right? Like I don't. I, I check their account first to make sure it's just not spam. And then, like a day later, I'm like, man, I have no interest in you as a person. <laughs> I just get rid of them. It's, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I feel. I look really dark, don't I? You do look a little dark, but that's okay. I can turn the light on. And God said, "Let there be light." One sec. Oh, Just fill, fill, fill up the fill up airtime. Oh. oh god, I don't know how to fill up airtime. I can't talk to myself. Uh, hockey playoffs starting. What's the score? Chicago's playing tonight. I know Duncan Keith scored a goal. His first game back from suspension. It's always a good start. Duncan Keith. How about that Kobe game? Oh, Chicago won three two. Ha ha. Oh, so much better. Chicago won three two. Just oh, did they? Florida won three one. Yeah, Tampa one five two, and and Nashville's up one nothing. Dude, I'm talking about something for two minutes, and then and then that's it. Which? Did you watch the final Kobe Bryant game the other night? I watched some of it. So I'm at school studying for a a final, and my Twitter feed's just like going off. So I check, and it's the start of the fourth. He has like thirty seven points or something, thirty four points. Yeah. So I'm like, oh man, it's his last game. I'll like watch the last. The last um, quarter. Holy crap, man. That game was, like, I tweeted. It was like, this game was destiny. They're yeah. down. They look like they're going to lose. They start coming back. And then they start 
throwing the ball to Kobe like erratically. He's missing shots. It's like they're going to lose. They call a timeout. And then he just starts draining every shot that he makes. <laughs> like, you literally couldn't have written a better ending. Like, it blew my mind. I watched as shot set. When he was younger, I wouldn't think he'd make. A guy in his face moving three in the corner. Fuck, dude, yeah. S- swish. Insane. Swish. Shot in. I'm like, what the hell? Like, if there is a god, he absorbed his body into Kobe and was <laughs> guiding the ball. Like, it was insane. I couldn't believe it. And then they come back and win. And he, he got, got, like... 60 points. 60 points. Dude, he got, what, 18 he was an 18 of the... He scored the last 18 points of the Lakers, something like that? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I seen this this thing after. It was like, keys to the game. Get Kobe the ball. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, when it's so funny to... because Utah needed to win that game to go to the playoffs. They needed to make... The, they needed to win. They needed to win and they needed the Rockets Houston to lose. lose. Yeah, but, yeah Houston but Houston won, won in the end. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah. Dude, it was... That Insane, was a legit man. storybook. Like yeah, it was. Of, it was perfect for him. Perfect. Like, I, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I straight up had once it was over. I actually had like chills. You know those moments in life where you're like, you weren't there, but you'll remember it because you watched it. It was one of those. Like, I don't. And like I started, Kobe's last game. Yeah, and I started thinking like, what was really the last time that I that happened? Like, I I, I remember watching Wayne Gretzky's last game. It was on my birthday. Oh wow! I think I think it was on my birthday. It was on my dad's birthday. There was a, some relevance to to it, but I remember his last game because my dad made me watch it with him, and he was skating around the ice without to before the game was over without like his stick and stuff. I remember that. But I mean, I started thinking like I don't really know what else I've watched that happened in real time that was of like significance. Nine eleven, maybe I watched nine eleven happen on the news. Did yeah, you that's that? true. I was I was in uh, grade eight at that time. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like I don't know. Anyways, I, that's, that's kind of off topic, but no, it's it's a it's a big historical moment too. <laughs> Dude, it I was a, it was a good twenty game. years. That's a big career. He was my he was my favorite player. You that was what? my favorite team. I kind of liked how uh, he never changed. He always was like him, and people always said he was an asshole and he was selfish. But he never he never changed who he was, and you got to respect him for that. I think. yeah. Because he didn't like let people saying, "Oh, you're an asshole," and "Oh, you want us to win," and you know what I mean. And it's like you don't care. And it's like, yeah, okay, maybe you can look at it that way. But maybe he was just ultra competitive. He played twenty years, and he five of the years he played one one quarter of the time he played, he was a champion. You got to give him props. That's pretty good. Yeah, exactly. So he might have been an asshole, but <laughs> the was... real MVP is Phil Jackson. <laughs> oh, He's dude. the real MVP. <laughs> dude, did you see those people beaking him yesterday on Twitter? And he was no, like, people were like, um, what is his thing? The three? The triangle. Triangle defense. He was like, the people were like, triangle defense doesn't work. Or He's like, triangle offense. Uh, triangle what, offense. Yeah, offense, whatever. He's like, yeah, that doesn't work and stuff. He's like, oh, it's really hard to hear you with my 11 championship rings. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I have five on my hand and one on my toe, bitch. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> He's like, tell me it doesn't work. I was like, man, what a burn. Phil like Jackson's it, the man. Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. That's it. Yeah. Cut it off right there. Yeah. I don't know. That guy had a good career, man. But anyways. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, Kobe Bryant is one of the best players to play the game. His last game, and it, Wayne Gretzky's last game was uh, oh, in Canada. Where's the freaking last game? April 18th, 1999. And it's of relevance because April 18th is my dad's birthday. There so that's is. why I remember it. There you go. It would be April because if it was your birthday, it would be like the start of the season. Yeah, yeah, November. <laughs> Stupid idiot, Dean. <laughs> Uh, should we do one of my topics? Yeah, let's do it. Topic uh, number two. Which one? I'm, we're going to end on the feeling or the impression one. Let's okay. talk about this. So I, I, I'm going to try and word this as good as I can. But basically, I was thinking today, uh, well, actually for like 10 minutes, but I was thinking for a topic. Uh, if you go back 10 years, comic books, uh, uh, even like fiction books like Game of Thrones and Harry Potter, well, maybe not Harry Potter, but Game of Thrones, like Lord of the Rings and stuff, they weren't even... They weren't really, like, mainstream, and if you liked that, you were in, like, this niche that was classified as geeky, right? Yeah. And basically, my topic is, uh, like, what do you think about the current state of, like, culture now compared to 10 years ago? Whereas now it's the norm for you to like superhero movies and to be into video games and to read comics and to play Dungeons & Dragons and magic and that stuff. Whereas it's more socially acceptable now than it was 10 years ago. 
I can I can go get down with social more socially acceptable. But when you go into like reading comics or playing magic or playing Pokemon and stuff like that, I think that still is a really narrow niche market. Like that isn't yeah. as ubiquitous as say comic book movies. I guess. Comic but I think that's still shows. even more socially accepted now than it was. I can yeah, I can agree with you it's more socially acceptable, but it's not as socially acceptable as watching uh, and enjoying a comic book movie. That being said, I think it is more acceptable, but the people that are really, really, really hardcore about these movies, that still is a nerdy thing. Very nerdy thing. Yeah, like you'll always have the Star Wars fans. That or are like, like Star Wars fanatics, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, the people like that who, kind of thing. Uh, or, the, or people that are like Marvel lovers or DC lovers. On that note, I did watch Batman vs. Superman yesterday. And? It's okay. It wasn't like... Uh, it was like ah, it was cool. it was different. Like you can tell the, the that there, there are like, plot holes every fucking place in that movie though. Well, but it was it was they tried to introduce way too much in one movie, <laughs> and they have definitely gone the way that like okay we're like like it's this is the real DC universe like aliens and shit exist. It's yeah. not like the Bale Christian Bale Batman where it's like it could be plausible in the real world. No, this one they fucking took that fucking reality and just they, threw it up they the window. threw it out the window they're like real joker nah yeah we're going to fucking all out on doomsday dude i will say this man i am so excited for suicide squad dude the chick that is harley quinn what's her name margot robbie, margot robbie? dude that so hot, hot as <laughs> fuck man so I'll, hot. I'll drop the f-bomb there man <laughs> that latest trailer where she was like pulling her shirt down i was like damn <laughs> she's only 25 years old i know I will have steal her. Have you watched her. The Big Short? I will steal her. Yeah, I've watched The Big Short. I didn't yeah, even she know was, she was in that. Yeah, she was in that. <laughs> I didn't know who she was until this, man. Holy oh, really? Holy shit. Yeah. Like, I'm talking like, I'm going to kidnap her. <laughs> <laughs> See? How you say those kind of things? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wouldn't kidnap her. I would just entice her with medication. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that either. But I want her to be my friend. And I want her to do the Harley Quinn pose in front of me lots. <laughs> <laughs> You're creeping out like dips and it goes high, dips and it goes He's coming high. back to normal? Oh, and he's back and creepy. Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, no, um, I, I think it's a little bit more socially acceptable now. Um, Thank you for bringing it back. Start, Thank you for bringing us back. Yeah, people are, people, people are starting to like understand these movies. But I think also they're trying to understand them because there's so many fucking movies now. Well, They're everywhere. That's the thing. It's just being hammered into you. Like You don't have a choice. Like yeah, when, like, there's movies slated all the way to 2030 or some shit. Well, dude, you know what's cool, though, when you look at the highest grossing movies of, of all time? It's all, like, fiction now. Yeah. It's comic book movies. It's, like, Lord of the Rings. It's Harry Potter. It's not, It's not like, I think Titanic's still up there, isn't it? I mean, that's going to be hard to beat. That is, yeah. But, like, Avatar. Like, but see, Titanic thing, is in fiction, though. And, yeah, and I know that's, that's what I was going to say. Like, that's the one thing that's still high up there that isn't fake. Yeah. So I think, like, I don't know. I don't like, should go back and watch that movie. Titanic is terrible. I tried doing it, like, a couple years ago. I, I love that. I love that movie. It's good. Dude, it's way too long. But I haven't watched it in, like, fucking years, though. Every time I watch the movie, I'm just thinking, like, there's enough room on there for you, Jack. <laughs> like, <laughs> there is. There's so much room, man. Science has been done. <laughs> Have you ever watched Rick and Morty? Uh, no. Watch Rick heard, and Morty. Please I've watch. The good things about okay. it. <laughs> Anyways, there's an episode where the dad, like, goes to this Titanic, like, uh, recreation. But they, they're, they're, the ship's on rails, so it'll, like, actually hit the iceberg. But the ship derails and misses the iceberg. And everyone's given, like, these souvenir doors to go home, like how, what, what she was laying on. And they're, it's, yeah. like, the size of his roof. And his wife's just like, there was room for Jack. <laughs> <laughs> There's room for Jack. <laughs> That's um, awesome. That shows the shit, by the way. Watch Rick and Morty, everyone. Anyway, sorry, no more derailing. Uh, yeah, so I think it's a little. I think it's socially acceptable now. I think I think that kind of stuff is um, something that everybody is is watching. If you go to anybody now, they everybody's seen a Marvel movie now. Everybody's yeah. seen. Well, I'm not a DC movie because those movies they're starting to come out now. But. I think Marvel and plus you get these grade A actors in them. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, you that get people a good love actor. to watch. I think like I don't know who the fuck Doctor Strange is, but man, Benedict Cumberbatch, fuck yeah, give me that. Sherlock is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Oh, I love that TV Dude, show. Every time I watch, like, ugh, it's, it's like, like watching movies. a mini movie, yeah, yeah. But I, like, I, that's what I love about it. 
Dude, him and uh, Martin Freeman. Martin Freeman together as like Sherlock Holmes and and um, Watson. Yeah, they like pair so good to get in that so show, well. man. So well. People told me about that show, and I'm like, oh, I don't know, man. An hour and a half. I didn't know who Benedict Cumberpatch or like Martin Freeman were, and I watched like the first episode, and I was like, man, if I went fishing, if you were fishing and I was the fish. I didn't even bite the hook. I deep throated it. It's in my stomach. <laughs> like you're pulling me up forever. I'm dead. I'm dead in the air. <laughs> it was so <laughs> it was so good, man. I don't understand. I tell like even my parents, man, I'm like, you guys watch like the price is right. <laughs> and like <What? laughs> and, and Jeopardy at night. And like and uh, the Bachelorette. It's like, what are you doing? Your life is only so long. Watch Sherlock. Watch Breaking Bad. Watch these, like, watch the, one the first thing. season of um, True Detective. Yeah, watch, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. The watch first Mad Men. Watch, oh, Mad Men. watch these things that are like masterpieces in their own sense. Jeopardy yeah. isn't a masterpiece. <laughs> the Price Is Right isn't a masterpiece. Those are stupid game shows filled with insane Americans who want to win a car <laughs> and spin the wheel of fortune, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then they get like ninety five or like fucking five cents. Like oh fuck! No, then say, they get then then whatever they win, they get taxed like ninety five percent. That's it. true too. <clears throat> what I was gonna say is, <clears throat> even like the TV shows that comic books are in and stuff like that, even they're starting to get like they're trying to get a little bit better. But I think they need to not put any shackles on them. There's too much restriction restrictions, especially on Agents of Shield. Yeah, that's okay. Because like I started watching it, like I, I watched it for a while, and then I just stopped because like it's not, nothing really happens in that show. Yeah, and I feel I feel like Marvel doesn't put enough love and care into their TV shows. Dude, there should be maybe a... Jessica Jones and, ne- and Daredevil though. Well, that's, yeah, but you know why those are good? Because they're Netflix. Yeah. You don't have to worry about ABC's rules on blood and nudity man that's why tv shows that are the best tv shows i don't care what anyone says man 99 percent of the best tv shows are amc and i'll give amc credit man they don't even have nudity but they still make badass shows but if you're not on hbo or like a netflix exclusive you're so restricted yeah or hulu I, yeah i haven't really what's a, what's a hulu exclusive i don't really know uh the man in the high castle oh i haven't seen that that's the one you were talking about you said it was really good right so fucking good um you should watch it on Hulu. Yeah, I'm just going to torrent the shit out of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're not trying to sugarcoat it. No, I don't care anymore. Uh, <laughs> dude, those are like... those are the, like I really view... like I never used to be a big TV or movie guy. Like Carrie really introduced me to like watching movies on weeknights. Dude, if I watched a movie not on a Saturday night growing up until like I met Carrie, it was, that never happened, man. It was like a movie night. But with yeah. her, I started watching movies and TV shows like at night, like as a thing. And it like TV shows are, uh, I like movies, but I think a TV show gets you more. Like I, I know you said too. this. Oh yeah, TV show. You got more investment. <sighs> when shit happens, you're more connected to the characters. It's, it's more of an you, impact on you. Yeah, it's more impact. When somebody dies in a movie, like when I was watching Batman versus Superman, I had no connection on any of the characters. I was like, eh, whatever. If Superman, like, okay, spoiler alert for the people that haven't watched Batman v Superman. Spoilers! Um, when Superman died, I was like, dies. cool. Yeah. yeah, dies, dies. I know, me too. I yeah. kind of just looked, and I was like, oh, I didn't think they would kill him, and that was the extent of my, like, emotion. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. Oh, but I'm but watching... Like, but, but you know that he has to come back for Justice League. You can't have Superman, or well, su- you can't have Justice League without Superman. Yeah, they already hinted that he's not even dead. You know yeah. how they bring him back in the comics? There's a way they bring him back in the comics. I can't remember, but they, that same situation happens. They bring him back. He's like yeah. second life or some shit like that. Oh, no. His body went into like a Kryptonian recovery phase. So they think he's dead, but he's just recovering or some shit like oh, that. Oh, God. Uh, they're gonna, I know they're going to do that, too. They're going to be like, well, he was in recovery phase. We did not know. He was in recovery for a year until the Justice League was formed, had many battles, and was in dire need. And his 18-year-long recovery finally finished. Fuck yeah, that. no, like they're doing they're doing a good job with the comic book movies. They're giving a lot. Of, they're pushing a lot of money into them, so like they look good. They sure the stories aren't very good. Half of them are shit stories, but but it's good that people are starting to like understand this market now. 
See, I feel like the people who were involved with this before was cool, like 10, 13 years ago. We should get like a ribbon. We should get a ribbon. We wear when we go to these things, and we're like, I was into this before it was cool. So I get plus. Like, I get, I get the better seat in the theater. <laughs> I get the extra content at the end of the Marvel movie. You have to leave, but only I get to watch it. You know what I mean? There should be something for us. It would never yeah. happen, but I don't know. No, that would never happen. That's just me. I'm insane with the head. But, uh, yeah, so anyways, it has, it's definitely become more mainstream, probably on purpose, but I liked Magic the Gathering when I was 10. And it's still, oh, not, dude. it's still not cool, but I had fun with it, and I didn't care what people thought a lot about me. <laughs> we, we used to, well, the thing is, like, when we used to play uh, like Yu-Gi-Oh! and stuff like that, we, I think, I'm pretty sure when we were young, we, we, we cared what people thought about us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did too, a little bit, actually. When I used to go to Great White, I'd make sure, like, I always was, like, walked out to make and like i basically made it so that i didn't see anyone when i was leaving i know it's kind of stupid but i don't know you're no it's you're it, in, but you're also a kid right and you want to go into like you're in high school and high school's mean man yeah high school is really people mean. like what mean are you bucket. doing at, at, at great white it's like well i was playing magic oh you're such a gay person <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> it's like hey man i challenge you to a duel <laughs> that, 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 yeah, no. <laughs> fucking throwing down cards drawing all epically but yeah, no. I think I think it's I think it's good that this this is the good direction for people to go to because it's something people are enjoying it. It's starting to pick up steam. Dude, we can have a one whole day. Lot. One day the ground will fall off, fall through. Well, like that's it, what it, at one point. That's what I was gonna say. It's a, it's gonna reach its climax soon, where it's gonna be like another decade without anything because it was yeah. so diluted, right? Yeah. Uh, I I do have a topic for another day when you talk about gamer girls. <laughs> because Twitch is filled with a lot of fakes, I think. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. And a lot of fake tits and a lot of fake people who like video games. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, no, that, that that should be a fun topic. That's a good topic. Anyways, let's go to the next one. All right, so my topic, third topic, is the zombie apocalypse, or any kind of apocalypse that happens. Not just zombies, so if a nuclear blast or something happened. How about this? Can we use this scenario? I was thinking about. I just thought about this. I watched this show called uh, "Finding a Friend for the End of the World" with Steve Carell. Have you seen it? Yes. Okay, so that's a good. I like that movie. It's a good movie. It, it, I dude, I liked it too. And Carrie thought yeah. it was so stupid. But, I think it was. A, it was like an endearing movie. Yeah, it was. In, it was like enjoyable, but it wasn't like I don't know. I, I thought it was. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, so like that situation, which could really happen to us, like an asteroid's coming towards Earth. They send humanity's last defense, and it fails. Yeah. So, but but my 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 main uh, thing about this is it's a threefold question. First thing is when the zombie apocalypse or some sort of apocalypse happens, what do you do first? Mm. So, and then the, the the second thing is where do you go? And then the third thing is how do you survive? Okay, so I'm gonna make one one quick uh, question first. Do you have a go bag? A what? A go bag. I go. Oh, so like once when it happens, you you, you walk something. Where, you walk in where you are right now, and you have ten seconds. You have the bag that's ready that you open the closet, you grab it, and you leave, and that's it. You never have to go back for anything. Do you have that? No. You have, no, I don't have one either. Colton told me he has one. He says he has a go bag right now. He can grab it and go, and it'll be fine. No. Let Let's say in this scenario, you don't have one either. Okay. So you're just. Well, I'm not even going back to my house then. Fuck my animal. <laughs> Fuck the cat and the bird. See ya. They yeah. can fend for themselves, man. Uh, yeah, I... see, you are you're in a predicament. You have millions of people around you. Harv, you're screwed. I am fucked. Your like chances of survival are probably less than a half percent. But well, see, like, would you would you want to like? I, I think I would go go on the roof. Yeah, but how long are you stay on the roof? When is it it's thirty degrees outside? Now you're getting heat stroke. You got in the water. You got to go down eventually, and then the yeah. monsters are waiting. You're kind of hooped, man. If I was you, you I, know know. I would do. I would ju- I would get I would jack a boat and go into the middle of the ocean. See, I was, okay, so I was watching The Fear of the Walking Dead, which is a, a TV show, and that's what they did. They have a yacht, and they're in the middle of the ocean. Like, unless one of you turns on there, but just throw them overboard. Yeah. Like, that's my thing. Like, first of all, I'm terrified of the ocean, so I probably would take, you have to be really convinced to get on a boat to go in the middle of the ocean by myself without any, like, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know, like, It's scary. Where? But for, I, see, for, I think I would go to a mall. 
No, you everyone's thinking that. I know, I know, I know the fact that like there's so many people in the mall or something like that. But what if this happens at like after hours or something like that? You don't think people are gonna smash through that mall? You're toast, man. Hey, man, you zombies better get in that, smash through. You better through hide mall. in that vent. I'm not worried about zombies. <laughs> the other eight hundred thousand people who are still alive, five percent of them are going to the mall because they're gonna try and go to sports check and get a hatchet. Dude, me personally, right now where I am, I would just drive in, out into the boonies. Just get on some land. Like, you know Herschel's Farm? The Walking Dead, that is the perfect scenario. But those people suck, that movie. That show. Also, also, the people in The Walking Dead are like, the zombies are go like two miles per hour or two kilometers per hour. And there's like, and, uh, I'm talking like fucking Dawn of the Dead 28 Days Later shit. Oh. I don't know how people die in The Walking Dead. No, I don't know how people die in The Walking Dead. The only like way I would die in The Walking zombies. Dead would be like being sick in an infection. Yeah, or, or getting killed by somebody else. Yeah, or hunger. Uh, I don't know, man. See, if I could survive and make it to the winter here, I'm fine. Because the winter's going to freeze and kill them all. Yeah. Realistically, hopefully, right? You would think. Yeah. It, you, would, yeah you, would, you would think that, they, yeah, that would happen. Or it's going to slow them down enough for you to like actually end it. I don't know. I think... Uh, I think you're screwed. Yeah, the, being in a populated uh, city does kind of give, put you in a disadvantage. See, in a way, we're both at a disadvantage. Even if we get out, do you have any survival skills? I don't. Fuck no. I think we talked about this on the last podcast. Dude, you know how? Here. If I was stuck with two sticks to make a fire, the only reference I have is Survivor, the TV show. You know how they, they you know how they do this with the stick and they yeah. rub all the way down. That's the only idea I have for making a fire. I'd maybe take my glasses if I was wearing them on a hot day and start a fire, but I'm <laughs> fucked, man. I thought you yeah. could take two rocks and make a spark, but you need a flint. I didn't even know that till a few weeks ago. That's how stupid I am. Like I'm toast, man. I'm finally. I just about the flint thing because I play games and yeah. they always use flint. I guess that's true. I never really thought about that. But dude, carry me right now. We're growing a mini vegetable garden. Like, we're just starting. This yeah. is my first forte into growing anything. <laughs> if I can't do this with all everything going for me, when shit hits the fan, <laughs> I'm Gr- so Growing mad. stuff, like, I, like, my parents do it and all that kind of stuff. It's not that, I don't think it's that tough. It's just ma- maintenance. Well, dude, do you know how when you don't have a store to buy seeds, and at the end of the year, where do you get the seeds from for next year? I don't know how to do that, do you? Would do you just dig the ground up and look for seeds and stuff? I don't know what the seed f- is for what. I don't know. Do you know? Watch The Martian. That'll teach you how to do but it. But there's no every every all the internet's down. All there's no power, and I have batteries. I'm not wasting. No, watch it. Watch it now, so you know. I'll watch it now. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like it's. Yeah. I think uh, I I think unless you're the type of person who can go hunting and find his deer, and he knows what berries to eat and what mushrooms he can eat and how he can make a uh, uh like if you're not a legit hunter survivor person, I think you're toast. And even then, that person needs to outlast the crazy city people that come in guns blazing. Yeah. Like, I really think if a, a legit Walking Dead zombie apocalypse happened, I think the world would come to an end. I think I think, so too. I think the only people... What if it wasn't a zombie apocalypse? What if it was like a nuclear... Like, Fallout kind of style? Oh, what was Fallout? We're all toast, man. There's no point to even run from that. Like, if, if someone said, okay, the nuclear war is starting, I'm not, I'm not even getting my car to go anywhere. I'm just going to probably sit on the couch and... And uh, give Carrie a couple hugs and wait for the bomb to drop because there's no point, man. Where am I? <laughs> give her a couple of hugs. <laughs> like, like, where are you gonna go? Oh, dude, we're toast, man. Like, let's get real here. Like, even if we're not in the blast, the radiation will kill us. Yeah, that's true. Like, there's no, like, you can't go on a mountain and avoid radiation. Like, you're you're toast, man. I mean, it's just, I don't think humanity is prepared for anything like that to happen because look at people's rationale. Everyone's like, let's get, get in our car and drive somewhere. Okay, well, so is everyone. So now you've, now you've packed all the highways. No one's going anywhere. People start getting out of their thing. They're frantic. They're fighting people on the road. So the road to toast. The people who stayed in, in town are going to malls and hunting stores to get that stuff, probably killing each other. And now you have people going out to the woods. Lots of people are doing that. Those people are dying. Like, I, I, think you're, I, think, I really think the whole world would get so panicked that people would be saying, like, stay calm, but the, the madness would outlive the calmness. I think we'd all die. I think, yeah. like, if there's 7 billion people now, if, if, if a legit zombie apocalypse happened right now, I bet you there'd be less than 10,000 people left on this earth within a year. You think so? I bet you 
nine 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 billion people would die from That's famine because they're not going to be producing food anymore. People aren't going to be cutting up chickens. You know what I mean? I don't know how to yeah. do that shit. I don't know how to skin a chicken to cut a moose. Like if I killed a moose, I would only have one day worth of meat because I don't know how to save it. It would all spoil. Yeah. Like I really think we're toast, man. Like I, I don't even, I don't even know if I would try. Like I, I really don't know if I would try. I think I would just sit here for ten minutes and be like, you know what? There's no scenario that this place. See, I, w- I would favor. try. I would, I would try to survive. You well, might as well try and see what happens. You're gonna die both ways, anyways. I guess, but. Well, why not just give it a try and see? But you gotta think. Let's say it's happening right now. Th- this is happening. Zombie apocalypse is happening in Vancouver. What's the What's first thing first- you do right now? First thing I would do is get in the car and just fucking drive. What car? Do you have a car? Haha, uh-huh, shit. You don't even have a car. <laughs> How far is the subway? Is the subway even running anymore? That's true, yeah. I don't think it would be. So I think you literally right was, now, the first just... thing you need to do is you need to f- wait for someone to get in the car and you need to kill them. Straight yeah. up right now. I think you need to kill someone to get their car. I would, actually, I would stay in my apartment. Yeah, but your water's water stops running. How much water? You, the first I have. Thing, I have other stuff here. The first thing you should stuff. do, man, is take everything that holds liquid and pour water into all of it. Yeah. Fill your bathtub up with water. Drink it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's crazy. Like I don't. I actually don't. I don't know what to do because I'm hoping that never happens in our life. But well, I think, the zombie apocalypse is never gonna happen. But dude, have you not seen that that insect that dies and comes back to life? Yeah, but see, that's. <sighs> I don't know why it's never it's not, it doesn't it transfer to humans. I know that's never gonna happen unless uh, yeah I couldn't I don't know that I can't see I think the nuclear war or like an asteroid will that's more probable than even like maybe too many people not being able to feed everyone might become a thing like a famine but yeah like you like you need to be rich in order to buy food like a gallon of milk will cost like a thousand bucks it'd be like uh, the twenties again. Yeah, we're, the where, Great Depression, where people were burning money to stay warm, right? Yeah, in in Germany they were because Germany, their yeah. money was completely useless. I don't know, man. It was like a hundred bucks to buy like a loaf of bread. I, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know what I would do, man. I think it's scary to kind of think about that. If that actually happened. Yeah, or even like an earthquake happening here too, right? It's I like, just uh, I just sent my brother an article. Uh, yesterday, I should send it to you. It's about the Cascadia Fault Line, which is close to Vancouver, right? Yeah. That is a subductive. Anyways, they think when it's going to go now, the new estimates is that it's going to take, like, all the way up to the I five down California into the water. They don't even think oh. you you guys aren't even gonna have a vo- it, an earthquake. It's just going to bring you in. It's going to slide everybody in Dude, there. Dude, the whole, all, the whole, yeah, they, they only think this is going to happen now because in the last, like, 10 years, they found that uh, the last, the life cycle of, like, the fault line, they found, like, sediment and stuff in, from, like, land, where land is now, like, 100 miles out into water, and they think it just all fell in, basically. <laughs> I should send you the article you should read. I sent it to my brother the other day. Yeah, that's, that's what I want to read right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I think you're fine. Just stay in your apartment. <laughs> My apartment is indestructible. It is. Even though everybody can hear everything <laughs> in this apartment. <laughs> you scream the neighbors like, hey, Hart, man, you okay? <laughs> uh, what's next? All right, your topic. The final topic. Final topic. Okay, this is it. So, do you feel that first impressions are a huge indication of your permanent feelings towards that person later on? My first instinct to saying this was yes. But? Because it depends on how long you know this person. So if you know this person more than, say, a cup, like a year, then no. Dude, I'm, I, I'm, like, I'm saying more like you meet someone and you've been with them in a room for an hour. Oh, like, fuck yeah, then. Yeah, like, I, I like... If someone stayed in my life for le- uh, more than a year, then I can tolerate them. But I've met people that in the first five minutes, I'm like, I will never enjoy your company. And and they've stayed in my life maybe through, like, friends, girlfriends, or boyfriends or whatever for, like, six months or something. And no matter what, I can't, like, change my opinion. or my. Yeah. They just 
you know, like it's, I'm sure people felt like that about me. I'm, I could be obnoxious and stuff once in a while and say stupid things, but man, it's been, it's happened to me a lot where like the first instinct I meet someone, it's just like, you know what? I have to tolerate you. But if this wasn't the situation, you and me would never be having a conversation. Yeah. No, I know. I know exactly what you're talking about. I just, I just think your first uh, impression should be your best impression. Cause like that, that. It's like when you go into an interview, you don't want to be a fucking asshole when you go in there. Yeah. Right? Because then they're going to think, like, oh, he's an asshole. I know he'll probably change or he's a different, but, like, this is the first time I'm meeting him. Why would he be an asshole? Right? That's the same thing. I think the same thing with people. It's such as meeting people in general. is like, if I, if I think you're an asshole for the first time I meet you, fuck you. I'm not going to keep having this conversation. I'm not going to keep talking to you. Yeah. I think, I think, I think your brain, like, recognizes like I think that I think it's like the thing and plus it's say, memory like, too right you remember that one first express, or impression and you're like yeah this is not no it's hard I to get know. past that yeah yeah but I think your brain has like it's almost like you know your gut feeling how people say you can trust your gut feeling I think your brain says like you, you meet this person and, and you're like picking out the things you don't like about them or they're, the way they're talking or something and you're just like your brain's like this person already meets or is disqualified you know what I mean like it doesn't meet the things that require someone like to be your friend or for you know you really care about them kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's dude, it's, it happens a lot. That's why I kind of think like, oh, maybe I'm a negative person, but it's like I don't think I am. No, I, that's not a negative thing to say. It's because like usually when you meet them for the first time, that that's that's what you're gonna take away from it from them. The next next time you see them, that's what you're gonna remember. That's the that's the thing you're gonna take away yeah. when you see them again. How you met them the first time. I don't know, man. It's getting hard. Like, I'm having a really hard time just tolerating people. Like, my first impression of them, <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, it's like, it's not even that bad. And it's like, oh, I don't think I could deal with you. But then it's like, someone sometimes just, you meet them, and they rub you the wrong way right away. And it's just like, you almost just like, it's like, I actually think I hate you. And I don't even know <laughs> you. Like, have you ever, that's what I'm talking hate, about. Hate is kind of a, a strong word. Oh, I don't know, man. It's happened to me before where I met people, and I'm like, man. There is nothing you can do to make me want to be your friend. Like, I don't care if Donald Trump died and left his billions of dollars to you and you want to take me on a plane trip around the world. I would not want to do that with you. You can send me in the plane alone, but I don't want to go with you. <laughs> I can go, but you, you have to stay. Like, man, it's, it's happened to me like a few times, like quite a few times where it's just like I leave and it, people are like, oh, do you know? We didn't get that impression, but it's like, I don't care if that's not how you felt, man. Like, don't invite me if that person's going to be there. Yeah. No, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and it kind of, like, sometimes you're like, did, was that really necessary for me to, like, hate them because of first impressions or anything like that? But then when other people say the same thing about that person, you're like, well, yeah, I was right for this yeah. person. And I mean, like, there's been times, like, not to, like, toot my own horn, but, like, a month or two later, it's like, I told people, like, no, I don't like this person. I'm not gonna go, and they're like, "Oh, Dean, that's just you." Blah, blah. And then, like a month or two later, I'm like, "They're like, oh yeah, that person turned out actually to be kind of shitty or something." And it's like, well, <laughs> like I don't know if my like people skills is better, or, like at recognizing, or it's just yeah. like I have a higher. Maybe I'm 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 not giving people the benefit of the doubt, but I don't know, man. I don't think I, I don't think I was this bad when I was younger. Maybe it's a getting older thing, but like I think it has to do with like, like I like we talked about earlier, like our friend circle so small that like it might be even like a. Uh, um, like a higher, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A higher bar. Yeah, a higher bar to en- enter, and it's like that. That is also true. I think the older you get, the the bar gets higher and higher because, like, you don't want bullshit anymore, right? You don't want a person that's gonna fuck with you or anything like that. You don't want any of that high school shit. Yeah, exactly. So, why would you want to uh, put up with that bullshit when you have friends that are completely fine? Yeah. Right? And you don't have to deal with that kind of shit. Yeah. No, that's true. I don't know. It happens a lot, though, man. I meet people and it's, like, not even... It's not even, like, to the far extent where it's, like, I hate, I think I hate you already. It's just, like... For me, it was, like, half the people I work with are shoppers. Well, yeah. That place, man. When See, we used to work there. I, then, I had more patience then to be kind of, like, fake nice. I don't think I want to be fake nice anymore, man. It's kind of, like, no. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm finding that with school, man. There's a lot of people that are just obnoxious and stuff, and they're like, oh, hey, did you, like, write the notes? Can you send me the notes? It's like, you know, I'm not going to send you the notes because you sat here the whole time talking, and you wouldn't shut the hell up, and you pissed me off. It's like, I don't even play nice anymore. I'm just like, nah. 
And they're like, why not? I'm just like, see you later. Like, I don't know. No, bro. <laughs> and it's like, and it's like they probably think I'm a dick now, but it's like, I, your first impression of me, I've never even said hi to you. You sit in and you're like rude the whole class and talk. And now you're like, turn to me. You're like, hey, man, you're paying attention. Can I have the note? It's like, do you think I'm going to think you're a great person off the start? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's just like a recent example. Like, there's, have you ever walked into like a house party and like someone comes up and talks to you standing with girls and you're just right away, you're like, this guy's an asshole. <laughs> and then you see him somewhere else and it's like, why are you guys associating with this guy? He's a dick. I don't yeah. Know. No, yeah. I know what you're talking about. I don't know. Maybe I know a little exactly. bit like narcissistic. I don't know. I have a couple of those friends. <laughs> Narcissist people. Narcissists. Yeah, I don't know. But it's funny to watch though. Since I guess, people. but I don't I don't know. I think I'm I think I'm like ninety. Secretly. <laughs> I think the ins I think the insides are shutting down, man. I'm like, see, like what's when, that when movie Benj- Med- Benjamin Button or something? When I see those kind of people, I laugh though. I, I sometimes I just laugh. It's like whatever. These guys, these guys are fucking. I have a hard time. Like when I ever see like obnoxious people that ha- don't have a good first impression, I just kind of laugh. It's like, well, that guy's whatever. That guy's fucked up. See you later. <laughs> Never again. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I don't know. I don't get mad very often either, though. So that's I just kind of laugh yeah. about it. Dude, I'm I I don't really uh, I don't know if I really get mad a lot, but I'm kind of thinking that I'm so like just starting to be like easy going with things that I'm it's transitioning into parts of my life that it shouldn't be like you ever get that feeling like I was thinking today like I, I was talking to Carrie about those stupid steps she gets she's like I should stop doing them and I, I said to her I was like are you and she's like N- obviously not and I'm like I think you have more drive every day to get these 10,000 steps <laughs> than I do right now in school and I think it's not because I don't care I think it's just that like I've just become like almost like monotone in like feelings towards stuff like it's hard for me to get like excited about a goal you have that uh, not really no i my goal the thing is like right now i don't have a specific goal that might be a problem too like i want something to go for right i don't have anything right now for that which is a problem in, in, in my own kind of thing. Because, like, I want something to work towards. I don't have anything to really work towards at the moment. Yeah. My, my first thing was getting a, getting a degree. I got that. The second one was getting a job. I got a job. And the third one was getting a job in iOS development. I got that. Yeah. But now it's just kind of like, what's next? Like, what, what is the next step for me? And I, I haven't figured that out yet. Yeah, man, I don't know. I will at some point. I think I'm on the... I, I guess my, my, my next goal is beating Dark Souls 3. But that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that is a goal, technically. Because uh, I still feel like I'm not, like... God damn it. I still feel like... Ah, um, uh, one sec. I'm put this on silent. I still feel like... I'm, I, like, when I live here, I don't feel like I'm at home yet. In a way. Oh, really? Right. I don't feel at home yet. I I need a place where I think I feel like I'm at home. I haven't found that yet. Why is that? Because you're living with someone or just where No, it's are? not because I'm living with someone. It just feels like this is not my end goal here. Mm. Oh, okay. I get it. You're like, you still feel like you're in like a transition. Yeah, I'm still in transition. And I've been living here almost for a year now. Hmm. Life sucks, man. I don't know. We'll see. I wish there was just some like person. You ever watch Futurama when they get unfrozen, no. they tag their hand with a thing, and they're like, "It's a surprise." And it's like, "Oh, you're a pizza delivery boy, Fry. That's your job in the new world." <laughs> That's what you have to do with I your feel life. Like that would be like your life would be simpler, man. You get a staple. It's like you're a neurologist, and here's all the skills. I would take that risk. If they, if you just got a thing and it told you everything, I would take that risk. You think so? If someone came up to be like, you're going to be a brain surgeon or you're going to be a garbage man, it's a 50-50. I'd be like, I'll take that risk. Yeah, might as well, right? Hey, garbage guys make good money, too. Not like they make shitty money. They work for the city. They work for the government. Yeah, exactly. Can't complain. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I, I'm glad that so I'm not first the only impress- person who hates people. First, first impressions first. are huge. Yes, I think I agree with you. They are huge. Yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. I don't even remember my first impression of you. I don't remember the first time I met you at Shoppers. Oh, God. I, I actually don't even remember that day. I either. just remember I worked. It might be a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe you left. You're like, that guy's a dick. 
I, I don't you. remember. Fool. I checked. I remember when I was working. You were. I don't know if you were working in the dairy section or if you were working at produce. At the, I think you were working produce. I don't. At the time remember, that you man. were. Yeah, I don't remember. That place moved me so many different areas. It was terrible. Right. The worst. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. Except they gave me good references for the job I got. So. <laughs> I'll take it. You always worked at like 6 in the morning, which fucking sucked for 4 you. in the morning. Oh, yeah, 4 in the morning, yeah. Dude, when I get up at like 8 a.m. now, I'm like, I sing that Michael Buble song. I'm like, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> I'm not up at 4 a.m. <laughs> oh, God. I think I think if I did that here, Derek would fucking shoot me. I don't know how I did last year. I went to the gym with Colton. Like, I woke up every day about like 4.30, six, five days a week, and then sunday i woke up at like 5 30 to go to work at six so i had one sleeping day a week i don't know how he did it for a year it's ridiculous i'm pretty yeah, sure yeah Der- derek usually day. wakes up around like 11 30 12 like lunchtime yeah really yeah he is like insomnia so he doesn't really sleep oh that's brutal yeah i think that's like the worst thing you can curse on someone yeah so he doesn't go to bed like four five o'clock oh jesus tell that guy to like eat like a bottle of melatonin before he goes to bed Sleep, I don't know. <laughs> sleep for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> then you won't be able to sleep for another week. Yeah, that's true. All right. Jinx. I gotta go study. I got a final tomorrow. Ugh. Uh, all right. Uh, you guys can follow us on... Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Harv Palmar. You can follow Dean on Twitter. Max- Maximum Dean. And on, Maxim- and on Insta. And on Instagram. Uh, you can follow the show on Maximum Capa- Max Capacity. Max Capacity Show on Twitter. Yeah. Send us your topics. Send us your topics, all that kind of stuff, all that fun stuff. Um, until next time. Bye. Bye, everyone.